Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing you God's truth today. Now this is a new week and I believe in my heart that the Spirit of God is stirring up something in you already. Hey, listen, God is doing something in your life. And the purpose of everything that God is doing in you is that you'll be able to manifest his name and his kingdom. The kingdom of God is the most important thing on earth and in heaven. Jesus said we should pray one prayer. The will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Actually, he said as it is written in heaven. Because the kingdom of God is written in heaven. Praise God. And, and he wants that which is written to be made manifest here on earth. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now we've been talking about following to know. And turn your Bibles with me to the book of John, chapter 8. John, chapter 8. And Jesus speaking here in verse 31. He says, Then Jesus said to those Jews which believe on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All months have been hitting some points for one reason, and you shall know the truth. You can't be following God for many years. And you, your assumptions are still assumptions. Something is not right. And the reason I've been sharing all these things I've been sharing with you is so you can look again. You know, there are situations that get us into a box somehow in where, 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 where it has to do with our faith. And sometimes we don't know how to respond. And the reason we don't know how to respond is because we don't have sufficient truth in our hearts. The worst thing that can ever happen to you is to face life with assumptions. And a lot of people are there. Jesus said, if you continue, continue doing what? In my word. So what, what do you do in his word? Obeying his word. If you continue in my word, what if you continue obeying my word? And that's where I, I always tell you this. The challenge with people who exclude in the gospel, you know, people who say um, we are not supposed to be doing this, we're not supposed to be doing that. See, they, they haven't necessarily come to the place of truth. Because if you come to the place of truth, the first thing you will recognize is the purpose of a thing. And it's when you know the purpose of a thing, you can now tell if that thing ought to continue or that thing ought to stop. See, I spoke to you about water baptism one time recently. And I said, water baptism is not necessary today. See, why do I say that? Now, I said that because I, I can show you the purpose of water baptism. The purpose of water baptism was for John. It was not for the, the God's children. It was for John. It was a sign. And because God has spoken concerning his son Jesus, that he will call him out of the water. See, So John was instructed, go to Jordan and be baptizing people there. And one day, the one who you are to announce is going to come by that water. Now you can see that the whole instruction to be baptized has nothing to do with anybody's salvation. But it had everything to do with recognizing the person of Jesus. So John was obeying the Lord until one day he looked up and he saw Jesus coming down. 
and he baptized Jesus. He announced Jesus. He fulfilled his assignment. Now, the moment he fulfilled that assignment, that was supposed to be the end of water baptism. Now, also, the one he was to announce or the one he announced was coming with a different baptism from him. See, so you have water baptism that was given to John and then you have a different baptism that was given to Jesus and Jesus' baptism was Holy Ghost and fire for which I have told you that the Holy Ghost baptism have taken place and is still taking place. When we get born again, we get baptized in the Holy Ghost by Jesus. Not everybody who comes out for the altar call it gets baptized with the Holy Ghost. No. Remember John said in Matthew chapter 3 that the one who's coming after me, he will thoroughly purge his floor. So John and his water baptism was an all-comers affair, okay? Anybody that comes, he will have to baptize them because they claim they are forsaking their sins. But you see, the water has no power to wash your sins. Neither does it have power to take away your sins. But it's a sign that I am willing and I'm ready to forsake my sins, okay? So however good that was, however that made you feel good, it ended with John the Baptist. Oh, but the apostles were still baptizing people with water. The fact that they were baptizing people with water doesn't mean it was right. That's one thing you need to understand. So that's where, you know, when people go with this idea that uh, show me in the Bible, then I will believe it. You can still be wrong, even if it is written in the Bible. So first, you need to know the purpose of it. And that's what following to know the truth does for you. Everything you're doing as a child of God, how much information do you have of it? And I'm not talking about getting the Bible and looking for, you know, you get your concordance. So these days, you can just use your phone and check for a phrase or a statement or a word. And then you see all the scriptures connected to that word which will appear to you. It makes things a lot easier. But you see, that even that doesn't mean you will end up with the truth. You don't study to know the truth. You follow to know the truth. Number two, you don't discover the truth. The truth is revealed to you. See? So, so a lot of things people think are discoveries are not discoveries. They are just, uh, just the same thing you do with academic work. You discover something and you're excited. It doesn't mean that thing you have discovered is, is, is really truth. It might help some, but it doesn't still mean that it's truth. I remember, you know, some things that have fascinated us before, you know, when as young believers, you know how, uh, you discover some things and they're like, wow, I remember when we, you, you know, the, the wise men that came to see Jesus. Okay. So we all grew up assuming and believing that there were three wise men. Even the drawings that you've seen, you see three of them with, on camel back, you know. <laughs> so you're like, there are three wise men. And then somebody just came up with this idea that, the Bible never said that there were three wise men. Like, no, they were. Then you go and check and say, hey, wow, the Bible never said that there were three wise men. Like, ah, revelation. Wow, this is great revelation. I never do. That's no revelation, brothers and sisters. That's no revelation. Because why is it no revelation? It did not reveal anything. It didn't. Every revelation have a purpose. And every revelation have something to believe in it. Okay, so we look at that statement. There were not three wise men. Okay. Okay, there were no three wise men. So how many were they? You don't know. You don't know. Yes, the Bible didn't say there were three. What if there were three? It's an assumption that there were three. Yes. Even if the Bible didn't say they were three. Why we assume they were three? Because of the, the, the quality of gift they brought to Jesus. Gold, frankincense, and men. Now, it's now assumed that one of them brought gold, one of them brought frankincense. Now, that's where the assumption came from. But in all sincerity, if you say they are not three, how many are they? Now, in those days, 
In those days, we were excited that, wow, this is Rema. You know, that's how we say in those days. This is Rema. But as you grow older, you're not asking yourself, what was the purpose of that argument in the first place? So there were not three. How many were they? You don't know. Okay, knowing that they were not three, what has it done to you? And just to know that the Bible did not say they are three and we're assuming that they were three. Okay, so what if you, you, maybe at the last day, it is revealed clearly that there were three. What would you do? Would you say the Bible was wrong? No. Would, so how has that affected your faith? Everything. There are, there are people today who just love to argue. Who just love to discover things. Oh, do you know the Bible did not say this? Do you know? Hey, see that your argument. What is it driving at? Is it just driving at causing division in the body? Or is there something in it for you to obey? See, that's where, you know, the, 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 the grace of Jesus Christ is real. Make no mistakes about it. But then there are people who have taken it to specialize in the message of grace. I will tell you their error. And, you know, I've told you this thing before. Once you start driving something that is not really by the Holy Ghost, once you start driving something based on study, you will hit a rock. And when you hit that rock, if you, if you have an, a little pride in you, you can easily enter into error. It takes people without pride to realize that, come, I was wrong, and they retrace their steps. But those who, who are proud, they will get to a point. I, I, you know, some weeks or months back, I've told you these things. Most preachers who teach on grace will end up saying, Tithing is not necessary, see, because it follows their trajectory, you know, it, it, the way they reason, you understand what I'm saying? The way they reason, they are going to surely have a problem with things like that. Now, not because tithing is wrong, not because the grace is wrong, but you see, they are reasoning, and I'm going to tell you uh, where their error is from. Their error is simply from this. Every scripture they quote on grace Somebody is teaching you now. You say, I'm going to show you several scriptures. But I'm sorry to tell you that all the scriptures you're quoting is one. According to the Bible, Jesus said it, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. So someone using that principle, I say, let's quote from Romans. Then I'll quote from Galatians chapter, chapter 2. And then I'll quote from Galatians chapter 3. Then I'll quote from... Timothy, and then I'll quote from Ephesians, then I'll quote from maybe Thessalonians. See? As I've shown you seven scriptures. You didn't show us seven scriptures. You showed us seven scriptures from one witness. So you've only given one witness. So if we use the principle of confirming truth, your witness does not qualify. You only gave one. No, I showed you seven. No, the seven witnesses a witness is a person. A witness is not a statement. Understand that, please. A witness is a person. A witness is not a statement. So if one person says something 10 times, it doesn't mean those are 10 witnesses. Those are but one witness. You need to find other witnesses to confirm that what you're saying is true or what you're saying is an established word. Please understand what I'm telling you today. Because this is, this is what leads to error. Lack of understanding. And people lack understanding because they, instead of them to be patient with Jesus Christ, see, they rather run ahead of him. It has taken me years to come to the full knowledge of the real purpose of Titan. Years. And all these years, not because I didn't think there was more, but because the Lord will not open it to me. And, and, and funny enough, there is nothing new he brought out of the blues. He was just showing me in different places where it is written and confirmed in scriptures. So no matter how intelligent you are, you can't study and find these things by intelligence. No, you can't. That's why I told you, truth is not discovered. Truth is revealed. Truth is revealed. When I tell you, 
at the end of the day, the whole world is going to be judged by Titan. You will look at it and say, how, how? This is not coming from studying. Understand. This is coming from the place of revelation. And, and I've, I've taken time to show you these things through the scriptures. Praise God. But you see, you see the witness in Abraham where it all started from. You see the witness in Moses. It's amazing. People who talk about, you know, like I said, um, whatever I teach, somehow we got, get to talk about Titan. That, that's because that's one core thing that the Lord has given to me. So, so um, don't get angry with me for <laughs> signing it. It's not about your money. Praise God. I remember I, we had a meeting and, and, and uh, a, a, one, someone who walked into the meeting and I said, we're talking about tithing. And he got offended. He said, can you imagine? They want your money. So, but thank God he was able to wait through the message. And when they were done, when we were done, he was like, wow, I've never heard it this way before. <laughs> Praise God. So sometimes you see the blindness of people's eyes. When someone comes up and says, look, let me talk to you about tithing. You hold your pocket. You're stingy. That's your problem. You have a problem. The preacher is not a problem. You have a problem. You're trying to safeguard your money. So even when someone is not coming after your money, you, 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 you already put a defense. There is nothing this man is going to say. And then you keep that thought in your heart and at the end of the day, you hear nothing. Meanwhile, within that message is life. You see? So, so when I talk about Titan, it's because that's one thing that the Lord has given to me, okay? And it didn't come in one revelation. It didn't come in one visitation. It has taken several years to come to the full understanding of it. And you see, for you to get a full understanding of something, you must see that thing in, Revel in Genesis. And then you must trace it through the scriptures. And then you find it in the end. Now, that's why I say the Bible is important because these are a book of several testimonies. Now, when I say you find it in the end, it doesn't necessarily mean you find it in Revelation. Please understand, Revelation doesn't mean it's the end. Yes, the book of Revelation spoke a lot about the end time, okay? But saying you see it in the end means that you will see the end of things, okay? So that end of things, you might find it in Matthew. Just like this one, it's in Matthew, you will see. That Jesus said he's going to judge the world by Titan. Hey, where did Jesus say he's going to judge the world by Titan? Okay, so where's your understanding? Who told your understanding? Praise God. Oh, yes. Please, I beg of you. This thing we do concerns life. It's not something we joke with. Every word that comes out of our mouth, someone is being saved by it. Someone is being saved by it. So we are careful the words that we speak. See? And I said earlier, every revelation must end in obedience. If your revelation does not spoil, does not command, does not make people to believe, something is wrong. So your revelation should not be that revelation that will make you say, ha, ah, ah, I used to believe this, you know. Now I don't, I don't, I don't believe anymore. See, you're leading people astray. You are leading people astray. Because that same mindset is what Satan is going to use to deceive them. I'm telling you the truth. See, when we stand before God, remember what Jesus said. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commands and teach men so, he will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And you know the funny thing about life? Jesus said, woe unto you if all men say good things about you. So if everybody said, you're preaching good, you're preaching good, you're preaching good, you better go back into your closet and ask the Lord, Lord, what do you think of me? Am I preaching good? Because Jesus said, woe unto you. 
He said, all those crowds that are telling your preaching well, they are your reward. Actually, you feel good. You feel good, okay? When you stand before the Lord, you tell you, you finish feeling good. You should have finished feeling good. So you've gotten your reward. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. But sorry, over here, you are the least person. And that's when you realize those who were not known at all, nobody even knew them to heal them. They will be the greatest. Praise God. My time is up today. But I pray for you. That the Spirit of God will guide your heart. Your heart is so precious to Him. That He will guide it. And by His hand lead you to the place of truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.